Um, but come on over. Uh, the uh, I, I learned of a, um, a, a, I guess you'd call it a new development that I thought was uh, startling, uh, I thought it was alarming, and I think it's a real problem um, with regard to the overall process going forward uh, last night. And it's for that reason I want to hold this press availability to lay it out there with you all. What I'd like to do is have Butch uh, lay it out, because I'm not a lawyer, as you all know, in terms of the context of what it means and the way the process works. And then I'd like to come back and give you all a few thoughts on my end, open up for a couple questions, and then I'm going to run on and let you all do the same. Is that fair enough? Butch. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon. My name is Butch Bowers. I'm an attorney with the law firm Hall & Bowers here in Columbia. And I want to talk to you just briefly about the Ethics Commission investigation process and then the information that the Governor just referred to, the, the, the new development. The normal process and normal procedure of an investigation in the Ethics Commission is to determine at the investigatory phase to determine if probable cause exists to go forward okay that's where we are right now we're in the probable cause phase of this investigation which means the ethics commission investigators review documents talk to witnesses um, you know, they can subpoena witnesses if they want and they come up with their side of the facts the governor does not have an opportunity during this initial preliminary investigatory process, the governor has no opportunity to weigh in, to give his side of the story, to present a defense, to present any facts that he thinks may exonerate him or anything of that sort. This is purely a one-sided uh, approach. The investigators then come up with a preliminary report and this report is, in, is written and that report is then given to the ethics commission, to the commission members. The nine commission members meet in executive session to determine if probable cause exists to go forward with a hearing and then to give the governor an opportunity to defend himself. Okay? So that, no, it's not, it is actually not. It, the three panel is later. You, you're confusing it already, Jim. The three panel is after they determine if that's a probable cause to go forward. Okay? It's the initial determination, and it's always done in private. It's executive session, and that is, is there probable cause to go forward? Okay? That report is never made public. Yes, have we waived confidentiality? We absolutely have, okay? What does that mean? Waiving confidentiality here means that the fact of the investigation is public and the document, the form, the complaint form itself is made public. And that's it. This preliminary report that's given to the commission to determine if probable cause exists, never made public. The only person it's given to, or the only entity it's given to, the Attorney General, or a prosecutorial body. That's it. Look at the law, look at the regs, that's it, all right? In this case, we have learned with it, through meetings with the uh, executive director of the Ethics Commission that they intend to give this preliminary report to the General Assembly on the basis of the representation was made, on the basis of the, their belief that the General Assembly is a prosecutorial body. I'm here to tell you just as a matter of law, that the General Assembly is not a prosecutorial body. Even if we get down the road of impeachment, I'm not here to talk about that, but even if we did, they're still not a pros prosecutorial body. Because if you look at the Constitution, impeachment does not involve criminal sanctions. All it involves, the ultimate remedy in impeachment is removal from office. It does not involve any criminal sanctions. And in fact, if you read the Constitution, it says that if an impeachment occurs and removal of office occurs, Double jeopardy does not attach, and further criminal prosecution can occur. So by definition, the impeachment is not prosecution. So the, the notion that the General Assembly is a prosecutorial body that's entitled to this investigatory report is legally flawed. And I'm just here to, t tell, to let you know about that. I would also tell you that the idea of turning over uh, an investigatory report of this nature to anybody other than a prosecutorial body flies in the face of fundamental fairness, notions of justice, fair play, and certainly due process. With that, sorry, back over to you, Governor. Sure. Yeah, yeah. What did he say in English? Because I'm not a lawyer. Like I, go, uh, I always go back to that basic. 
What he said in English is this, and I, I, I thought about it as I was driving down from Anderson. I think of it in these terms. We have a real problem if members of the General Assembly are going and trying to influence and truncate an ethics committee process so that they can get the intended result that they want and then use that for impeachment. That, that's the real problem as I see it in plain English. And, you know, if you go this route, what you're doing is you're setting up a kangaroo court um, wherein you frankly ought to just base the whole thing on media headlines, with all due respect to media headlines, or you ought to just base it on political opponents' accusations. And what I think is very, very important when you think about something like this is actually basing it on the facts rather than simply accusations. And so, you know, I get it that mem many members of the General Assembly would like to see me gone. But, I mean, that has not been a new thing over the last six and a half years. That, that has been a fairly constant uh, refrain for about six and a half years. Now, the difference is they think that they have something that they could actually force me to leave office out on. And the difference here, I think the new development is, you know, you cannot define, quote, the good of the state as nobody there uh, uh, any longer able to look over the shoulder what the General Assembly is or isn't doing. And here's what I mean by that. I mean, did, did it stir up a hornet's nest when we pushed for transparency and ultimately went all the way to South Carolina Supreme Court on the, this notion of transparency? It used to be that the old way of doing business was with bobtailing, you know, or, or, or you know, you'd sign up a bill, hand the back of the envelope to the, uh, to the uh, agency in question, say, hey, we kind of want these three things funded. I mean, was that a challenge? Did it stir up a hornet's nest? Did it cause some ill will? Yeah. Or where we have stood on spending, yeah. But have we been, I think, uh, vindicated from the standpoint of we were getting ahead of ourselves with regard to spending? We kept saying we're getting ahead of ourselves with regard to spending. And sure enough, look at what has transpired with regard to the national and global economies and its impact in South Carolina budget. Did it stir up a hornet's nest when we talked about you know, this whole notion of uh, stimulus money and not getting ahead of ourselves with regard to spending? Or for that matter, what we said about restructuring or a whole host of other things? Yes. It did. But, but I keep going back to this larger notion, what even Senator Glenn McConnell said the other day, which is you should not base uh, one's findings or one's approach to this, I think, very serious matter simply based on a popularity contest within the General Assembly. Because if that was the, w the, the definition of how we determine something like this, I can tell you the outcome right now. And I think many people in this room could w as well. So I, I, I guess, again, let me try and simplify because with all due respect to lawyer world, what, what I think you're trying to say and what I am certainly trying to say is that it is not okay to short circuit an ethics process to try and get the result that you want or to try and get it to reach the conclusion that would give you the ability to get to the result that you want. Um, or put another way, it's not okay to short circuit the process to set up a system where you get full control of government in South Carolina with no check or balance from the executive branch. And so I think that we are dealing with a fairly big issue. Let me give you a little bit more concrete as to what you're getting at. What we know is that David Thomas went to meet with Herb Hayden, who's the executive director of the Ethics Committee. Now, with all due respect to David Thomas's investigation, or quote, investigation thus far, and we've, we've, we've talked about how fundamentally flawed that thing is. I mean, any time you go out and say you broke the law based on using business class tickets that have been used in South Carolina for the last 30 years by Republican and Democratic governors alike, by Secretary of Commerce who's consistently through Republican and Democratic administrations, by staff at the Commerce level, and by even general, members of General Assembly, even members of the Senate, and for that matter, even a member of his own subcommittee. Again, and I do not begrudge Governor Hodges or Senator Land on that economic development trip, but there is more than a little bit of irony in the fact that there are only three members of his subcommittee, and he won't turn to the fellow two folks off to his left and say, you broke the law, when he's turning it over to the right and saying to, in this case, the governor's office, you broke the law. So if you look at the context of his, quote, investigation, you'd say, this is not an investigation. This is more of uh, something else. And so it's telling that he has gone to meet with Herb Hayden, the executive director. It's telling that, that Bobby Harrell has gone to meet with the executive director. But even more telling is the fact that Bill Sandifer said this. And he said this uh, a couple of times here recently in Columbia Circles. 
And this is not verbatim, but this is uh, roughly what he said. He said, the House does not, in response to a question that was asked at a, 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 a conference, a couple of conferences, the House does not want to, to wait on the Ethics Commission full investigation because that would take months and run into the session. Therefore, the House is going to receive a preliminary report from the Commission and based on that report, make determination uh, to institute impeachment proceedings. Now, what he's really saying there is without, in the legal terms that Butch was getting at, without, quote, Paul Harvey's rest of the story, you just get to take the, the, the charges, but none of the defense, none of the rest of the story is the basis on which you either decide or don't decide to bring impeachment proceedings. And that fundamentally is not fair tied to the larger notion of every one of us should, should you, if something's brought against you, you can have something brought against you, but you've got to have your say, too, to say, wait, here's the rest of the story. And so I think that's fundamentally what this is about. Um, we're simply saying, look, by all means, we've been for all along opening up the ethics process, but opening up the full thing. Not just saying, let's do the first part where they say, do, do, is there something to investigate over here, but then calling it quits so the, the, the House can go on with what it, some of its members might want to do from a political standpoint, but to say, no, let's have what they, they have to say, but then let's also have the rest of the story as to what has happened, the context of these flights. It is telling, if you again have 30 years of history of people buying business class tickets of both parties, and not once people saying you broke the law. The Legislative Audit Committee itself in 2002 and 2004 did audits of the Hodges administration and the Department of Commerce and found no findings of any wrongdoing. That's the legislative audit body itself, which is the oversight arm for the legislative body of the executive branch. And so again, all we're saying here is let's let the Ethics Committee work through its full process, not a truncated process, and then let's make decisions after that. But we, when I heard that last night, I thought it was worth bringing to y'all's attention, wanted to do so. Any questions from y'all's yeah, end? Yeah, you say that this is short-circuiting the ethics process, but aren't you yourself short-circuiting the process by calling in question the results of the report before you do the scene? No, because as, as, as Bush just explained to you, John, the nature of the preliminary process, it's like, um, again, we're not in a courtroom, but if you were, it's just the prosecutor's case with nothing from the defense. And if we were just going on the prosecutor's case, then I'd say, let's just go with what a political opponents have. Let's just go ahead with you know what, whatever David Thomas has to say about business class tickets. Let's just go with it. And let's ignore the fact that there's a 30-year history with regard to how folks in state government have used business class tickets. Let's ignore the fact that Republicans and Democrats alike have consistently used business class tickets. And let's ignore the fact that some of David Thomas's own or one of David Thomas's own subcommittee members himself has used business class tickets along with other members of General Assembly. And so I'm just saying that there's a larger context that I think ought to be out there if you're going to have any kind of serious investigation. Not just what David Thomas, with all due respect to David Thomas, might have accused or said, particularly if it's accusation in one direction, but not accusation in the other direction. But you just called it a kangaroo court. I mean, how can, when you refer to it as kangaroo No, court, that is not what I said, John. What I said was we would create a kangaroo court, and I absolutely believe that if we truncate the process and not let the ethics committee go through its process. What are you going to do if it plays out this way? I'll use every tool in the toolbox. That's why, you know, uh, in other words, we will bring legal action if necessary. We will use every tool in the toolbox to say we have to have a full ethics committee report, not a piece of report, not a piece of report so that people can then say, tell you what, well, let's use that as a grounds to begin impeachment proceedings that some in the General Assembly have already made it abundantly clear they'd like to do. I mean, Greg Delaney has already said, this is something I'm going to file, period. Doesn't matter what the facts are, this is what I'm going to do. And so in that kind of audience, it's particularly important that I think you say, look, let's just throw out all the facts. Let's not, let's not get a piece of the pie, let's throw out all the facts. Governor, when I spoke with the director earlier today, he was described the process, they, they do the investigation, then there is a nine-member commission that meets in a special session, they never actually do a session. Mm -hmm. Then they essentially produce 
there are a, a couple of different paths. You can either say there's nothing to go forward on and there's no action. You can say there's something to go forward on and then there uh, amounts to an indictment that sure. comes out of that. It either goes to the civil process or it goes to the criminal process. That's the point at which any of this is released. That's what her opinion said today. Mm -hmm. That's the way it's always been. Why are you saying that it's different in your case? Because what's Bill Sander for saying? I haven't spoken to Bill Sander. No, but what was the quote that I just gave you? So you believe that the legislature has been given uh, yeah. commit, certain, certain members of the House have been given a commitment that they'll see this before it even goes no, to that. No, what I'm saying is what he is saying. This is, this is why it was worth bringing up with you all. Let me read it again. The House does not want to wait on the Ethics Commission full investigation because that would take months and run into the session. Therefore, the House is going to receive a preliminary report from, uh, from the Commission and based on that report, make determination to institute impeachment proceedings. So and that's a pretty position. big deal. Well, what's his because response to that information? How, 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 how would he be in a position to even know that? He's just saying that. Well, that's why it's kind of telling that folks in the General Assembly have already been meeting with folks in the Ethics Commission. Governor, in reference to that subcommittee member, uh, Senator Thomas's subcommittee member, sure. Senator Land, um, you gave the example that he had taken a trip in the past, <coughs> business class tickets. I spoke with Senator Thomas about that today. He said the difference is that Senator Land used private money to purchase that ticket, whereas you did not. Do you have that proof of that private money? I'm telling you what he said. I, I, I don't know. To that. Fair enough. But, but, but I'm saying what proof do you have for that? I'm asking. So you're saying you doubt no, that I, he I, used I, I'm asking. Do you have any proof of what he said? I have no proof. I was just getting your response. No, to no. This but, but, so you have no proof. But what we do have is receipts from the Senate Clerk's Office that show that state funds were used. And I'd be glad to provide that evidence. Governor, did yes. it? Is it your opinion that what, by releasing this information to the General Assembly that they're violating the law themselves? Uh, again, I'm not a lawyer. All I know is it is well, certainly I outside the context. I, I'll, I'll, I'll hand it off to Butch. But outside of the context of what we said, hey, let's lay it all out there. We think we have an incredibly great story to be told with regard to watching out for the tax fair. But if you never get to have that side of the equation, you only get to have, hey, you know, we, we think it's illegal to use business class tickets, but no context, then I think that that is a real problem. I, I don't know where that comes into law because I'm not a lawyer, but I know it sure doesn't make common sense. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, yeah, let's be clear. The preliminary report has not even been generated yet. The investigatory process at the Ethics Commission has not been completed yet, so the, the Ethics Commission has not released anything to the General Assembly. I will tell you that if they do release this uh, preliminary report to the General Assembly, I would submit that yes, that's against the law. Because, again, the General Assembly is not a prosecutorial body, and the law is clear. Jim, I'm, I'm not sure what Herb told you. I've got a letter here from Herb dated August 27th. The only information that will be made pub public during the pendency of this matter is the fact that an investigation is being conducted and the complaint form itself. Now, I do understand that the in this investigatory preliminary report, it is made public at the end of the process, after the governor's had a chance to respond at, at the end of the process when the uh, final determination has been made. So the, the I would submit to you, yes, if they do end up indeed uh, turn this over to the uh, General Assembly, that that would be a violation of that. Oh, I'm, I'm saying. Uh, okay, wait, 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 wait. It's not a question how loud you raise your voice. I'm, I'm, I'm coming to you. Hang on. The, uh, uh, you're, you're here. I don't want to interrupt the tennis court either. The, uh, um, but uh, all this goes back to what you don't want to have is power play politics going on where folks say, well, let's take what we want out of a report and use that as validation to do what we want to do. 